very important uh, program. Basically, it's a curtain raiser uh, for our program, certificate program on plastic packaging. On behalf of IPMAS, Amtech, we would like to welcome all of you uh, to this uh, very important program. The objective of uh, this program is to make you aware of all the details of the program and uh, try to answer all your questions and queries regarding this very important certificate program on plastic packaging. You have been joined by various important experts from academia and industry. But before I can move ahead, let me invite our co-chairman of IPMAS Amtech, Mr. Ajay Desai, one of the most senior members of the industry of the APMA Managing Committee. He is also the past president of IPMA. So I would request Sri Ajay Desai to deliver his welcome address. Ajay Bhai, it's yours. Ajay Bhai, you are on mute. Good afternoon to all. On behalf of AIPMS, MTech, and FIPS, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome each and every one of you to the virtual curtain raiser for our upcoming workshop Plastics to Packaging Material Enhancing Marketability. FMAS MTech, in collaboration, in collaboration with the Foundation for Innovative Packaging and Sustainability is organizing this webinar, which will deepen our understanding on concepts, functions, components, and classification of packaging. I wholeheartedly welcome our eminent speaker, Dr. N.C. Shah, Dr. Anup Ghosh, Mr. Mrinal Banerjee. I also welcome Mr. Deepak Mundada, Mr. Rohit Kanuga, Mr. Ravi Jasnani, and Mr. Manish Dedia on this panel. Thank you for sparing your precious time and agreeing to share your valuable knowledge and experience with us. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Desai, for your welcome address. So uh, it is uh, very nice to see a large number of participants, both from the industry and also the institutions. So when I am seeing the list, I can see senior professors and students from some of the institutes like LD College of Engineering, Government Polytechnic Valsad, MIT uh, Pune University, and we have from Government Polytechnic Nashik, Government Polytechnic Miraj, and we have also uh, students and professors from Institute of Chemical Technology. And we have some very renowned companies, representatives who are participating from Amul, from Konkan Specialty Poly Products, Celo, Neil Kamal, Cosmo Films, and many others. So we would like to thank our industry professionals, industry institutions, and students for joining this very important course which is relevant both for the industry as well as the students who are looking for career in plastic plastic packaging sector. So before I can really move ahead, let me just take you through a very short presentation on IPMAS MTech. So, IPMA is, uh, IPMA is the All India Plastics Manufacturers Association. This is a 75 year old not for profit body, one of the largest associations in the country, representing the interest of more than 20,000 plastic industry members. The main vision of IPMA is basically to help the industry grow rapidly and we are providing all possible assistance to the members and industry at large. Recently in February 2021, uh, IPMA has launched a center of excellence 
IFMA's AmTech in Mumbai with a vision to help the industry in reducing overall time to design, develop, and rapid rollout of the products, thereby increasing the speed to market globally. Vision behind this noble initiative of IFMA is to promote high quality knowledge and industrial services so that the industry and the industry professionals gain knowledge and are able to contribute to the country's economy. This basically the center of excellence has been set up in, we have knowledge partners such as Zeiss, Autodesk, we have a foundation for plastic packaging and sustainability, FIPS. Then we also have various organizations in 3D printing and additive manufacturing. So the center is providing technology and management services. We are organizing digital workshops, webinars, and certificate courses for students for, uh, and for the trainees and industry workers. So there are five major verticals. One is under design, reverse engineering, additive manufacturing, plastic packaging, and management programs. So uh, as I said, these are our international knowledge partners. So on the reverse engineering, so the idea is to provide uh, services and training to the industry and to the students on 3D scanning, on laser scanning, contour measurement, and we are also providing various uh, high level, middle level training to the students and to the industry on ways and tools and techniques for uh, inspection, for metrology, for reverse engineering, and on also on various software which is related to the Zeiss and reverse engineering. On the on the design part, we we are basically uh, providing uh, training and services on uh, Autodesk, on design software, on mold flow simulation softwares, on like Autodesk Inventor. The idea is to provide the students and the industry knowledge on how to best design your product so that the overall time to design and the quality is ensured. So these are very important aspects when you get into the industry. On the 3D part, 3D printing, we are basically providing at the moment trainings but we are also setting up a complete lab with uh, one of the best FDM and 3D polyjet printers so that the services and training could be provided on additive manufacturing, basically for prototype development, for low volume production, and also to make sure that we are able to roll out the product very faster. On the plastic packaging, which basically is the crux of the matter in our discussion today, we have a very uh, renowned foundation, FIPS, led by Professor Saha, uh, Professor A.K. Ghosh, and Mr. Banerjee. They are the stalwarts in the plastic industry. So we have tied up with them and bringing out one of the best and the only kind of program which is conducted in India on uh, various aspects which our panelists will take care today in their presentation. And finally, on we are also organizing various management level programs for the students and for the industry basically on increasing the operational efficiency. Only uh, we are actually at the moment conducting a program on how to identify profit leakages in the company so that there are various low hanging fruits in the company. If you are able to identify the leakages, so with the same in investment, you can reduce your leakages, you can reduce your loss, and you can increase your profitability. So these are very important programs as far as the industry is concerned. So as I said, our center of excellence is both for the industry and for the students. So they, these are the industrial services, and there are also a lot of training and skill development programs which we are conducting. One of the very important aspects for the students is that the center of excellence is providing career development services. So uh, the students would be able to get career advisory services, we will also assist you with placement assistance because we have almost 20,000 industry members. We can also provide students the opportunity of internship in the industry. And for those students or for those industry professionals who want to start up a company, we can also uh, provide entrepreneurship assistance uh, right from the idea to uh, how, how basically to convert the idea into practicality and to the extent where we can also help them to tie up with the banks and finance. 
And finally, uh, this particular center of excellence as a concept of finishing school. So we understand that the students who are basically coming out from the, from the polytechnic, from the diploma, or from the engineering colleges, basically the idea is to make them industry ready. So the programs are specially designed so that we could bridge the gap between the academia and the industry so that you know the so that you guys can get very good jobs and even for industry professionals who are already working they can upskill themselves and for the industry they can uh, they can send their manpower so that they are trained the best and uh, you know the best faculty members across the country so with this i would like to thank you all of you for joining uh, uh, this program and uh, I would now uh, hand over uh, the entire session to Professor N.C. Saha. He is one of the most uh, renowned experts uh, as far as the plastic packaging is concerned. He has been the uh, former director of Indian Institute of Packaging. He is also the past vice president of World Packaging Organization. Uh, he is also heading the uh, BIS committee on plastic packaging, uh, various almost 15 research papers, 450 articles. So he is one of the stalwarts of the plastic packaging internationally known. Then we have Professor A.K. Ghosh. He is a professor of material science and engineering, IIT Delhi. And uh, he is basically a fellow of National Academy of Sciences, uh, India, director R&D of FIPS, more than 30 years of research and teaching experience, uh, almost supervised 30 PhD thesis and more than 100 MTech thesis, various patents. He is basically known for his knowledge on uh, processing and rheology, reactive processing of polymer blends and alloys, 3D printing polymers. And then we have Mr. Vidal Banerjee with more than 33 of experience in industry so he has, he has worked for SL Propac Limited, almost applied for 156 patents globally, for which he got 55, he got global grant, and innovator and thought leader in the field of laminated and extruded tube packaging, allied polymer conversion field, including printing and decoration. So we are very proud to have these three eminent experts uh, for this program, and they will introduce you to you the, about the program. Please, please feel free to put your questions in the chat. If needed, just uh, put in a message. We can also unmute you, so then you can ask the question. So with this, I would hand over the entire session to Professor N.C. Saha. Saha Saab, it's all yours. Thank you, Deepakji. Namaskar. A very good afternoon to all of you. I think it's a great pleasure for us uh, on behalf of the Foundation for Innovative Packaging and Sustainability and uh, it's a great honor for us that uh, we have been invited by all india plastic manufacturers association one of the largest apex body in the field of plastics packaging and we have been invited uh, to be a knowledge partner for their certificate program and we have signed a memorandum of understanding about uh, three months back and uh, the whole objective is the how best we can disseminate the knowledge in the subject of plastics and packaging. And there will be four different modules uh, related to plastics and packaging. And the first one, which is going to launch from the next week on 2nd of September. So uh, uh, this is a great, uh, uh, great opportunity for us to disseminate whatever the knowledge we have, the three people. But before we go in detail, uh, may I request uh, Shiraj uh, just to um, screen my presentation. Yeah. Make it full screen, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, as uh, you know that um, uh, that uh, our foundation for innovative packaging and sustainability, uh, with our tagline as a knowledge platform, the idea to solution, and this was officially launched on 20th January 2021. In fact, it was registered last year as a um, uh, under the section 81 as an NGO, non-government, non-profit body. But it is officially launched on 20th January at the hands of Professor M. M. Sharma, the Padma Vishan awardee and the distinguished emeritus professor, the former director of ICT in Mumbai, in the August presence of 
um, Mr. Rajini Ranjan Rashmi, the former IAS, the former Chief Secretary of Manipur, and Dr. U. Venkatishu, former Chief Secretary of Tripura. Eventually, both of them are the mentors of our foundation. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, no, no, previous slide. Yes. Previous slide. Shiraj. No, no, sorry, Shiraj. Previous slide, previous slides. Yeah, one second. Yeah, one second. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, along with that, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Balani has already mentioned, I, along with Professor Ghosh um, and Mr. Banerjee, uh, we have uh, spent our the entire career more than 30 years. I was uh, working at the Indian Institute of Packaging for the last 32 years. And I was the 10 years as a director from 2009 to 2019. And whatever we have, the knowledge on the packaging and Professor Bosch, uh, he's still there as a Professor Emeritus at IIT Delhi. And Mr. Banerjee with a lot of patents in the plastic packaging industry, we thought this is the time to disseminate the knowledge on the related to the plastics or not only the plastics, any kind of material science, which are really important for the packaging industry. It's maybe paper, paperboard, plastic, metal, glass, and so on. Uh, when you got the invitation from the All India Plastic Manufacturing Association, IFMA, we are really uh, thrilled. And then we took it uh, as a challenge and let's start the program. So this will be an, a one month curriculum. Okay, next slide. Next slide. Uh, as I mentioned that we have got um, two former Chief Secretary of Manipur, Mr. Rajini Ranjan Rashmi, and uh, former Chief Secretary of Tripura, Dr. U. Venkateshulu, both are the mentors of our foundation. In addition to that, we have got another 14 advisor, thought leaders, and chief consultant. Uh, I'll tell in details their name and all, but here uh, I could not show that picture because of the bandwidth. Uh, we have got three national advisors, Dr. Lakshmi Raghupati, who was the former director of Ministry of Environment, and right now she is a, a visiting professor of the School of Advanced Studies. Uh, we also have a national advisor, Professor Pradhimna Vyas, who was the former director of National Institute of Design, Ahmedabad, and Dr. Anil Wali, who is at present is the managing director of FITT at IIT Delhi. We also got three international advisors, uh, Professor as Sinha Rai, who is actually the director CSR at South Africa from uh, Pretoria. In fact, he is one of the speaker in this our plastics packaging program. And we have an, another international advisor from Bangladesh, uh, Mr. Satyullah Chaudhary, and another person from Sri Lanka, uh, Mr. Dharma Ratnayake. We also got um, uh, three thought leaders. One is Mr. Raviji Chaudhary from New York. He has been working with the Campbell Shook. Another person is uh, Mr. Deepak Mehta, who is the managing director, working with the recycling missionary at Baroda, and uh, Mr. Tamil Manian, he is uh, from the Chennai. We have got four chief consultants, uh, Mr. Rahul Bhargav, who is actually eventually was an alumni of IIP, the first batch, worked for 30 years in the Ranbaxian Sun Pharma. He is a chief consultant of innovation. We have Mr. Selendra Singh, who is a chief consultant of sustainability. Mr. Deepak Manchanda, who is a chief consultant of packaging design, over 40 years experience. And we got Shubhat Bhattacharji, who was the ex-managing director of Naramek, with almost 35 years experience. At present, he is a consultant to CSR, CFTRI. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. FIPS has got uh, mainly the four activities. One is the skill development program, the research and innovation, the project and entrepreneurship, and publication and policy advocacy. In these three areas which have been working. Yeah, next slide, just click it. Siraj. Yeah. So the skill development, our whole idea is the upskilling the industry who have been working uh, in the various field. Uh, our objective is how best we can upskill their knowledge. Under the skill development, we have a collaborative training and education program. And being a knowledge platform of a foundation for the industry and community, we do a lot of program for awareness program, reaching the industry and the environment, update the skill and knowledge for women and youth of the different communities under Skill India mission to make self reliant Next slide. Under research, uh, we have already, I'll show the next slide, we have already signed the MOU with uh, seven universities in the country. 
uh, whole objective how best we can collaborate the research on the packaging solution, uh, mainly on the basic packaging, because that India Institute of Packaging, we are doing mostly uh, on the applied research, but here in India, which is missing about called the basic research on the packaging material. And we thought on the foundation, we can start the basic research. Our whole idea is that to join hands with these various institute and universities. Already we have uh, started one collaborative research program with the Mahatma Gandhi University at Kerala. And whatever the research, we try to get this whole objective to translate that research to the industry. We as an R&D partner with the university, as well as a partner with the industry, we're in between trying to make a bridge between the academy and industry. Supporting the industry with the innovative packaging technology, in the package design service and solution and we also work as a technology center the whole idea is to ultimately to make a center of excellence next slide the under project uh, as i mentioned we have a translation and r d from the lab to commercialization the two projects one project has been uh, sponsored by the international german scientific council the industrial projects on packaging of products we are also working with two startups companies on the package design, development, and sustainability. We have also started one sustainability project from Europe and the cutting edge technology for conversion of packaging waste into value-added product. Yeah, next slide. The fourth vertical, what we are working about the publication, uh, when this uh, foundation was launched on 20th of January, we first launched a white paper where all the 16 members of our foundation, we wrote about the packaging innovative packaging and sustainability, including to the mentors. Uh, we have recently, uh, your the plastic waste management, what is this norm has come the, from the Ministry of Forest and Environment and Climate Change from the foundation side. We have also given our policy advocacy, what should be done on a science-based, uh, our information we have given to the ministry. We are trying to connect to, even to Niti IO, that how best uh, the different policy can be formulated by the government of India and everything should be based on science and technology based. Uh, the framework for the circular economy, package design, quality improvement support, the design advocacy and policy support. These are the various publication and policy advocacies. In short, we are working in the five different department. One is the skill development, research and innovation, projects and entrepreneurship, and publication and policy advocacy. Next slide. Yeah, next. Yeah. So whatever the information or the activities and the training activity we make it is a kite module, the K for the knowledge platform, the packaging concept classification, packaging material function, packaging research innovation, recyclability and life cycle analysis, the circular economy and sustainability. And then on the information package, the material data sheet manufacturer, packaging types, brands and machinery, testing methods, standards, regulatory method. And TE, the training and education, we have a basic training. We are just completing one basic training program tomorrow. That program is being conducted with the foundation and the Delhi University. And tomorrow, this is a concluding program for one month program on basic training on the packaging technology, mainly on the food products. We have an elementary training program, the advanced training program, an in-house training program, and of course the entrepreneurship training program. So the various module we have created related to the packaging and sustainability, the whole objective to disseminate the knowledge. Next slide. Yeah, these are the various collaborative institutes. Uh, two more has not been included. Uh, there is an organization called Northeast Center for Technology and Applied Research, NACTER. This is under the Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India, Shillong. Uh, there is an university called Mahatma Gandhi University, Kota, Kerala. Then a Northeast Regional Institute for Science and Technology, NERIST, it's in Arunachal Pradesh. And in Hyderabad called National Institute for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprise, NIMACME, under the Ministry of MSME, Government of India, and IIT Delhi has got a foundation for innovation on technology transfer, FITT, and at Meghala, the University of Science and Technology, USTM. And very recently, we have signed MOU with uh, Delhi University, and we are also going to sign with the National Institute of Design. These two will be um, uh, joining uh, very soon with uh, as a collaborative institute. Next slide. 
Now, uh, today's event with this uh, little background about our foundation, I thought just to give an idea about what the program we are planned with the MTech uh, IPA and the Arvin Mehta uh, Technology Center, the Innovation Center, and IPA, that All India Plastic and Bridge Association, and our foundation will be starting a program uh, from 2nd of September. The topic is the plastics in packaging material enhancing the marketability. Next slide. Hmm. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, this is the program, which is a one month uh, executive development program as a module one, which will be from 2nd September to 24th of September. Uh, this is a four weeks program every day, Thursday and Friday. And every day there will be a three hours online course and uh, total six days or 24 hours. Within the 24 hours, there will be theory class, video session, and also will be an evaluation pattern so that based on the scoring marks, we'll also give a certificate from the foundation and also the IPA. Next slide. Uh, there are four weeks. Uh, the first week we are going to cover the concepts, function, and components and classification on packaging material. It is just to warm up the students who are coming uh, or the participants coming with the industry background, uh, the academy background, or maybe the faculty members are coming just to give an idea what is packaging and how it is important for our society and what are the various packaging material, and what is the role of plastics packaging, which almost 55% uh, plastics are consumed for a packaging application where 70% plastic packaging goes to the processed food or a, a fresh food industry, the food industry. We will have a session on the introduction to plastics material in packaging. What are the various identification methods? Even there are simple identification methods in the laboratory. Without laboratory, you can just, without any instruments, you can just analyze and you can identify what is polyethylene, what is polypropylene, or what is nylon, or what is polyvinyl, PVC, and so on. We have a one session on innovative and futuristic plastic material in packaging application, which will be taken by Professor uh, Sinha Roy, he is the director of CSIR at Pretoria, South Africa. He will be mostly talking on the nanotechnology and nanoscience, how really nanoscience has entered to the plastics packaging and going to improve upon the barrier property to enhance the shelf life. We also have a session on concept of package design and its application. How really the package design is important whenever we do a plastics package product. And that will be taken by Mr. Uh, Deepak Kanchanda, who is our chief consultant of our foundation. Uh, we also have a structure and properties of polymeric material used in packaging that will be taken by uh, Professor Onu Ghosh, who is our director of foundation. Uh, yeah, next slide. Uh, we have a session on rheology and processability of plastics material. Uh, Professor Ghosh has got, uh, uh, this is a session, what he covered that. Uh, and then we have a selection of specific polymer for a given process, like an injection molding, glow molding, blown film and all. Uh, most of you are from the plastic processing industry. You know very well about the processing. But uh, before processing, one has to understand about what is the material characteristics. And you will be very surprised just by changing this uh, uh, based on the material characteristics and geological properties and just make the changes in the parameter on process and you can come out with a different product and different innovative product. This session will be taken by my colleague, Mr. Banerjee, with his uh, all the knowledge and he was an innovation for the last so many years, almost 30 years. We have also session and critical role of master batch and additives. How really master batch is important and just to make a colored plastic packaging material that will be taken by uh, um, Professor Ghosh. We have a demonstration on plastic uh, processing techniques, critical factors, and troubleshooting. Uh, this is very important for the processing industry when you are running your machines. What are the troubleshooting in case of man machine material? And that will be taken by Mr. Banerjee. He will give you all the cue, all the key line, what are the important parameters to be looked into that whenever you go for the processing line. Next slide. We also have a concepts of barrier properties for plastics material and the importance in packaging, which is very important when you talk about uh, food packaging, it depends on the barrier properties. Uh, one is the oxygen barrier or carbon dioxide barrier, which goes to the map technology and also the moisture barrier. 
but what is the concept of barrier what is called permeability concept and based on which all the uh, food packaging completely depend on and based on the barrier property the shelf life of the food products uh, can be enhanced this will be taken by me i'll talk on that and then my colleague mr banerjee will take on cost optimization the process manpower energy poor quality and machine breakdown is all again on troubleshooting because he being a person from the industry side we'll be talking about what are the important on that then we have a session on material characterization for processing challenges and troubleshooting uh, this will also be taken by um, uh, mr professor anup ghosh then we have a plastic packaging for domestic and export market how the market is required whenever you make a finished product that will be taken by our one of our chief consultant for foundation mr subhash patacharji who was the managing director of neramec the marketing federation and the minister donor next next slide we have a testing and quality evaluation of plastics material on packaging uh, there are different types of testing is on the rigid plastics and you have a semi rigid plastics you have a flexible material what are the various mechanical properties chemical property physical chemical properties optical properties how do you test it what standard method to be followed is all the details session will be taken by me and then we also plan that based on that there will be an evaluation mechanism uh, semi objective or maybe the objective type questions and based on that uh, the students will be evaluated before we issue a certificate on the last day we'll have a just two session one session will be a concept of biodegradable oxy biodegradable compostable and biopolymer process and application this will be taken by professor shampa saha she is a associate professor of iit delhi and she will cover on that and then we have got a qualitative products lead to the better price realization this will be taken by mr banerji and the how really when you develop some product and ultimately you have to think about it how it can get an roi value that will be taken and followed by that we will have a certificate award ceremony that's on the last day that is you can say on a 24th of september it's just a quick uh, uh, just the program starts on second on thursday and you see it, it just fly because the four weeks every week you have to just spend uh, three hours on an online program and uh, next slide Uh, these are the faculty like i'll be there professor ghosh mr banerji dr lakshmi raghupati would be coming to the next module which is on the plastics in packaging and sustainability and circular economy and that she will be talking because she is already a visiting professor at terry school of advanced studies and dr shuprakha singha rai uh, who is advisor our foundation and is also the director of csr uh, south africa from pretoria he will be connecting on the 2nd of september you will be in the module 1 next slide uh mr deepak mehta is uh, one of our thought leader of foundation uh, he is the managing director of a libom uh, in a libom incorporated which is in baroda they deal with all kind of recycling machinery and he will be giving a video presentation as well as a theoretical session on this that comes on the module 2 uh mr manchanda will be taking session on this module 1 as on module 2 but he is specialized on a package design mr bhattacharya will be taking on this module 1 will be uh, talking about uh, the shubhash bhattacharya talking on the marketing side and mr rahul i think he is taking one session in module 1 and one in module 2 and mr salendra singh will be talking about the scenario of the uh, our recycle plastics the problem what we have in india as well as abroad that session is coming under module 2 that will be taken by shilam singh next next slide yeah we have another professor bimal katiar who is a dean r and d from iit guwahati he will be taking a session on uh, the biopolymer and the composite uh, uh, composite structure of the various polymeric material which will be taken on the next uh, module 2 and uh, professor shampa shah she will be taking on another session on a um, called biodegradable material in the multi layer how it is useful the bio waste product and that will come on the module 2 so these are the various about 14 speakers who will be covering module 1 module 2 the module 1 which we are covering today uh, as a covered cut and dresser this is on plastics and packaging the material science which will be the module 1 and the module 2 which is the plastics in packaging environmental aspect and the circular economy 
next slide uh, this is the book will be given uh, to every participant uh, this book is uh, is just under print now and we'll be giving on 2nd of uh, September, whoever has registered plastics packaging material enhancing marketability. This book has been written by all the speakers, all the authors, and it is published by our foundation. We are coming out in the volume two, which will be plastics in packaging, environmental uh, aspect, and the circular economy that will come, which will be starting from 18th of November. Next slide. So thank you so much. This is just to give a idea about what is our foundation and what this module one we are going to cover but uh, we are always uh, free to ask um, um, reply whatever the question you have uh, but before we go to that uh, my colleague professor onu ghosh uh, professor iid delhi has already joined so i will request professor ghosh to give little overview about how really the course is uh, very much important and relevant for the students and researchers who will be joining for this program. Professor Ghosh. Uh, thank you, Professor Shah. You have already covered and I'm, I'm actually sorry because I'm connected to another program where I'm chairing and in between I moved. Uh, so I think uh, as you rightly said that, you know, the very important thing is about the materials. Is there any way I can share? Uh, uh, Shiraja is there and yeah. can you help Shiraj me? Shiraj is short... sharing. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I can show two, three slides. Is it okay? Can you see? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So as, as it has been already mentioned by Professor Shah, he has given this uh, about because we are focusing on plastics and packaging and we are talking about module one. But what I want to emphasize, let me see if I can. So what I'm emphasizing on that materials is very important things. You know, that's what we are, we are, we are trying to give you a very uh, nicely the, uh, the, this training uh, or the educative materials uh, on materials. And once we know the materials, we can enhance processability. We can enhance the product dimension. As a result, it will have a better marketability. That's what we, we thought. And we will be focusing on that and you have seen seen that the different areas uh, I, I i really want to say that even even those who are be attending from industry those who will be involved in r d in uh, developing uh, new materials new technology it becomes very very important many a time we do not understand what the material is and we don't know what and the polymer is such an unique material that it has it, i believe that you know it is a it has in so many options that we can work with this material that we can develop from the same material many, many different applications and better and better product, better and better packaging product, better and better packageability. And that was our aspect. And obviously, we'll move from there to the environmental aspect and circular economy in the later on. And I believe those who are attending module one and those who will be joining also soon, uh, they will be even more interested also for module two together, three and four, which will be followed later on. Uh, uh, as as uh, Professor Shah has already said that, you know, that what is the benefit we have? We'll have a lots of upgradation of knowledge in packaging science, application of plastics in packaging, which you have already seen in his talk. You know, what is very important? We are actually looking for new generation materials. What are those materials? And, and you know, I, 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 you don't have to have a new polymeric material, same polymeric material, different combination. Different modification can give you a, a material which will be, be very innovative packaging product, which will give. But when you do that, do you know how to characterize it? So we have to understand this material. Okay. So these these course will give you state of the art technologies, processes, optimization, quality evaluation, regulatory compliance, and all that. So you can see that, and that's what we have taken. Uh, uh, this uh, course series of modules for this, and which I think will benefit. Uh, across uh, the, the participants, across like students, research scholars, and the industry personnel, most probably my colleague, uh, uh, Mr. Banerjee will emphasize also more on that. And 
we will say that you know it is the first of its kind of skill development program we are taking in packaging okay so we are bringing as you can see 14 eminent speakers are involved in talking giving their experience uh, in in their in their academic and professional life they are bringing in okay so these are the internationally acclaimed faculty members will will do that as you have seen that you, you will be able to get a uh, a book on on the whole of the training program that that's what we are covering so we will have a, uh, a, a ready uh, reconnor with you which will give you lots of uh, uh, coverage that we'll do through our lectures and then we'll give you a lot of details in the book so that you can connect them later you can use them later obviously at the end uh, you will get a career uh, or a good career oriented replacement it will help you uh, because you know the many many i mean many institutions have not seen uh, that their packaging uh, related uh, degrees are being offered okay so this is you give you ample opportunity to learn from here uh, when you do that uh, this has been already been talked about i believe there's we are covering 24 hours and we are finishing only in four weeks so you have a, a six hours per week only two day we are engaging thursdays and fridays so that you know we our other activities can go on very very well and so that will be the modes of evaluation i don't know why it's not moving yeah so uh, in terms of education you know that we in this field we need knowledge based personnel and that's what uh, uh, we are we are trying to develop as i rightly as i said that it will focus on technology development uh, it will uh, train researchers for developing new products and uh, how to absorb new technologies sometimes we know about new technologies we don't know why it is working on that why this material will, uh, will, will behave that way okay we are we are trying to talk about uh, technology development and transfer so if some of you are interested for entrepreneurship developments you know scale up uh, the startup activities and all that okay so this will give you a new idea that this kind of packaging uh, will be very helpful I, I give an example some startup has come come to us uh, for a new material they have developed uh, based on biodegradable material uh, but they need knowledge for developing packaging product you know there's a huge demand for this material for packaging but the but the but the person uh, or the people involved in the startup they do not have the knowledge of packaging so they are approaching us and we we are doing that and uh, in fact they should attend all this program also uh, uh, then then how do you know about recyclability uh, sustainability and all that will cover uh, and then we also need to develop packaging in the context of the fourth industrial revolution and climate change which is a new thing so we are, will be giving basic thing how to exploit basic things into new products develop new materials they can be adopted to new technology that will give you new packaging uh, products and then how do we, we do we connect to the newer newer developments that is happening okay i may show one or two slides so you can see that you know that uh, that we use a lot of plastics for packaging i'll show only two or three slides okay and these are the plastic we know but do you know how how we can control the packaging uh, product characteristics we can do uh, if you understand this in between that's what i'm showing when i'll give the lectures when my uh, eminent colleagues will give the lectures you'll see how they will cover it okay I can, how do I control the structure and I'll give you what you want, which will be higher marketability. You know, this product will be lighter, product will be high performance. It has a different functionalities. It will do the job. And you, uh, and I, we, we like to see that it is broaden the scope of the material for a better packageability and as a result, better marketability. That's what you have to do. Okay. This is, a, this is, I like to show always, you know, that when you when you develop a product we develop a product like this but you know at some point you reach a reach a plateau and then it is controlled by processability as professor shah was saying we'll be able to explain to you all these so that you can alter that properties you want to develop nano nano materials based packaging material you will see that this will be all covered that how do we get good nano, nano packaging which will give you improved packaging bio based packaging active packaging and all that this will be all covered. I just given a uh, one slide only uh, to show you that this will be, but how the material development can can help you to do uh, better commercialization, better marketability in the in the product. Okay. Now now we not only not only exploit existing material, we go for new materials, and there are lots of advantages. You will see that this will be uh, you know that. 
uh, what is this new kind of materials okay that is coming into the market what is the other countries are doing for what we can we can do with the cellulosic material uh, bio based material and all that so you know people talk about bio based material and we, you will you, you know many people do not know what is the characteristics of this material how you exploit that for the processing purposes okay but obviously it is a definite advantage we want to we want to have these as a new materials okay it will not replace all materials but some applications some packaging and it may give you a business age or marketability on on that angle okay can we can we have an alternate like this can i combine with other materials and all that so so that can be that can be covered okay i think i i will stop here okay uh, with these uh, uh, material applications and all that okay and uh, uh, if there is a any queries or questions uh, then 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 you can go for this yeah yeah uh, now i'll request uh, my colleague uh, mr banerjee you can just highlight uh, that how really it is going to help to the industry so you have spent uh, more than three decades in the plastic packaging industry yeah over to mr banerjee yeah can i have the sharing right please yeah, I think I must stop it. Huh. Yeah. So, uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, participants. I'm sure a lot of students and uh, faculty member and uh, industrialist, uh, supervisor, managers are there. I have only one slide and I'll explain more on that because. Uh, uh, you can put a full yeah. screen. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fine. Just one minute, I want to hide this. Okay. So, you know, uh, whatever uh, my colleagues, uh, Professor uh, uh, Dr. Shaha and uh, Professor Dr. Anup Ghosh has said, you know, it always happened in industry that uh, we run the machine. We come with different background, engineering or uh, graduation, uh, general uh, uh, education, but we efficiently run the machine. But then problem comes when uh, there is a uh, uh, crisis in uh, material sourcing, you know, like one particular source, what they were supplying so far, say LDP, LLDP, polypropylene. So there is a crisis, you don't have material, then you'll have to uh, uh, source that from alternate, uh, uh, either um, uh, agents or alternate source, you know, maybe overseas and all this, or it may happen other way around, you are importing from a particular, say, Exxon or Dow uh, or uh, Thai Petrochemicals because there you may find more value or something like that. But suddenly uh, the material shortage is there, but you will have to use uh, reliance material. But everything has an equivalency, but all the material has different uh, of their own uh, you know, characteristics. So uh, you know, for the, the machine operator or even uh, procurement managers, uh, material sourcing, so they'll have to understand, you know, what material we have been using. So identification of the material is very important. Now, what is the characteristics? So characterization of the material is very important. So this I'm talking about base material. So this is very important. Once you understand uh, getting equivalent material or nearest material is very easier. So for industry, this is very important. So this course will, uh, you know, uh, uh, give a thought provoking uh, idea that how to do that, uh, how to understand all these, uh, you know, mystery, you know, uh, polymer mystery and all this. Now, next to polymer comes, you know, uh, if you get a nearest, not exactly equivalent, but almost equivalent material, but you need to, you know, uh, make it exact because your output process and all this, that should not change. One can say that, you know, always I have, uh, you know, declaration to the MNCs and all the, if there is a great change or source change, I'll have to, uh, I'll have to uh, notify them. So this is very, you know, the part of supply agreement. This is very important. Uh, those who are supplying to MNCs, they know that this is uh, very, very critical. And any non-conformance, that means quietly you are doing and they don't know. And if there is a, a problem in uh, in the finished product or during their machinability, then they will reject entire thing and it will be liab liable to pay the consequential losses, not only the packaging material costs, including their field material and all this. So these are very important in uh, you know the high production and you know all these 
the quality supply chain agreement and all the there you cannot change but what you can do as soon as you understand uh, you know identify the material characterize and you, you know that finished product what is coming out of the the particular machine which is already constant then these uh, by by virtue of testing and validation you say this is exactly equivalent and you can quickly get a permission because you don't want to do in a negative sense but you want to do because of certain influences which is not your control but as soon as you go with all this data research data and analytical data to your uh, supplier or they call strategic partner they understand because if you stop uh, supplying the raw material that means their raw material means your finished packaging materials they won't be able to feel and send to their end consumers and all this so they understand this but in between you know this kind of science technology is involved into that so blindly you cannot do that so this course is definitely helpful and they'll give you know the right kind of trigger where you need to think where you need to act maybe before the you know the damage is done you can do this thing so this is the first part and then you will find that uh, even the raw materials uh, are singular like ldp lldp pp or whatever you know uh, pvc we don't talk much because pvc has a very specific um, uh, usage but in a flexible packaging you will find more on thermoplastics uh, bopp film cast pp film polyester film these are very important there but then lot of roles are in additives and master batch so uh, this uh, you know little dosing 2 3 percent and that can enhance uh, machinability uh, sealability light weighting uh, you know uh, properties those things can important because sometimes what happens that primary packaging uh, if it is very thin you need a secondary packing and then of course you need a bulk shipper to go to the warehouse and all this but if you have a technique or opportunity that primary packaging by virtue of additives you make it little bit more body material and then it has a air cushioning with the inert uh, you know the cap map atmospheric so you don't need the immediate secondary you need a, a you know bigger shipper and all this so those things can be manipulated so polymer additives these are very important to the industry and then uh, identification part i already said these are very important you need to have your own uh, testing validation machinery essential of course some of the critical like uh, you know the global migration specific migration uh, this thing you can outsource but you know basic identification mfi then uh, uh, then you know as a blend what all ratios are there so this you can do now this identification characterization work in it uh, in a different angle also like you get a unknown sample like your customer has come and they say i don't know what exactly they must be telling this is made out of polypropylene and uh, barrier material but exactly when you go through your identification you know dsc fdir you will find no no there is some other components these i have seen a uh, lot of sample from multinational they used to outsource from china and then when i used to test it in my uh, r d lab i was you know creativity and innovation so it is uh, best of both world you have a design and you have some you know engineering structure in mind but then our r d you know the polymer scientist and phd's uh, they used to tell sir uh, this is not the same what uh, our uh, you know customers uh, they are telling it is some different uh, you know then it's very interesting you know like what say and what they do is different so used to tell them so this is very important so that you know once you know what all uh, inputs are there in what uh, proportion and what thickness it is very easier for you to give a equivalent or even better uh, packaging material then uh, the third part what i feel is very important you know um, uh, this you know the production uh, atmosphere research you know they should do something uh, you know uh, very innovative or something proactively and tell management that sir we have done uh, these are thing we found this is even better so higher management always you know they appreciate that so uh, what is there like you know uh, cost control like you have a particular process which you may or may not be you know uh, changing so often but uh, if you have uh, option that with the same machine that is you know same resource you produce more that is more square meter or more numbers 
it is very appreciable. You know, the efficiency goes more than 100%. Now, when you talk about efficiency, production efficiency, always there is a, you know, kind of pressure in, uh, in uh, production, high production environment that if machine can produce uh, 20 million uh, per month uh, based on particular production cycle per minute or per hour, uh, but why you are producing only say 15 or 16 million, why you cannot achieve 20? So, so these uh, kind of, um, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the calculation comes that what is the machine nameplate capacity and what is the cycle and how much you can run so there is a mechanism to have a commercial efficiency. That means how much time you get the machine. Because sometimes you have, you know, statutory holiday, 15th August, you cannot work. So you'll have to minus that. But whatever time you get, then you'll have to see, you know, uh, for preventive maintenance, the systematic, you need some time. So now the tool chain, what you do otherwise, any time as per the, you know, the, the work order or production load, can you can you do that, uh, the tool changeover during this preventive maintenance time. That is, you get additional time. So in this matter, you can get almost 80, 85% efficiency. But in a cycle or rotating machine, if you get you know more than 85, say around 90%, this is good. But uh, believe you me, some people, some industry I know I have worked, it is only 50 or 60% hardly. So nameplate capacity and what actually you get, it is only 50, 60%. That means you will have to produce, I mean, you'll have to buy more machine and all this where the, you know, the bottom line will be always, you know, uh, red or just, you know, orange and all. It will never be green or black there. Then you have to understand what is the energy efficiency. There will be some machines and all these own duration, you know, 20 years, 25 years. You'll find that for a kg of plastic processing, your kilowatt hour consumption is very high, more than one kilowatt hour. But now you get a machine which is, you know, half the uh, energy consumption, you know, 0 0.46, 0 0.5 kilowatt hour. So this, you'll have to understand the thing. Quality protocol, this is very important. When you are supplying uh, your product, you know, the finished goods to a, you know, customer, uh, either MNC or even Indian uh, customer for food product, pharmaceutical, you'll have to understand what is, what all parameters are critical for them which you may be thinking critical for them, that is a minor, or what you are thinking minor, for them it is uh, very critical. So this you'll have to understand. For example, if you have a fiber particle inside uh, a product, say uh, it is a container for ice cream or food or something, that is critical for them. They will simply reject the entire lot and food product, you cannot do rework on your rejected lot. This has to be, you know, it is a uh, defaced, trash, and you may, Use that as a you know one of the layer if they allow that as a inner layer. But these are very uh, very uh, very important, and you'll have to have understanding on that. So this will be teaching you. Then DOE design of uh, experiment. These are very important. So here it comes like stage gate also. So what will be your design? What uh, you know the end product you are looking for? So you'll have to get different stage, and then you'll have to have a, a gates uh, you know where you uh, allow the, uh, the uh, that product to go or you kill it, make a new DOE and all this. So all this will be teaching. So for the industry uh, staff members, even the, you know, uh, procurement, you know, anything uh, related or allied with the production, this is very important and uh, this will be thought provoking. So first model, uh, the module one, you are talking about material, material characteristic, and slowly we'll talk about sustainability, which is a hot topics and all this, you'll have to understand uh, that, uh, you know, how, how to, um, uh, you know, apply those, reduce, uh, recycle and reuse principles and all these, uh, whether uh, to, to use uh, that uh, biocompostable polymer for a primary packaging, these are the questions. So in the second module, we'll be teaching. And slowly we will talk about production technology and all these related to packaging and polymer machinery. So I want to stop here one uh, little slide. Uh, so I would love to have you know question answer session. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Doctor yeah. Saha. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Banerjee, Mr. Ghosh. So we have Mr. Rohit Kanoga. He is uh, our senior managing committee member and also very successful entrepreneur. So I would request uh, Mr. Rohit Kanoga to, uh, if there are some questions, you can just moderate it. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, I think it was a 
wonderful curtain raiser that we have had for the new packaging course uh, being organized along with FIPS. Um, and I think what was the best to see was the uh, was the kind of thought process that has gone into uh, you know designing the course, not only this course, the next course on um, sustainability and the further courses which deal with the regulation. So uh, coming on to some of the questions uh, that have that have come through. Uh, so, first question that has uh, come is, uh, and this is uh, a question that you know few people have asked me uh, in person also when I was trying to talk to them and I encourage them to enroll for the course, which is that you know a lot of people are apprehensive of this being a virtual program, and uh, you know typically many of the most of the training programs in our industry have been run face to face in classrooms in conference rooms, etc. So, uh, how do you feel that, uh, uh, you know, how effective would this virtual session be? Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Kanuga. I think uh, even the government of India, the national uh, education policy, which is coming recently, yes. NEP, yes. they have mentioned that uh, the question of the pandemic, what we have already undergone the last two years and still going on, we still know, don't know that whether the third wave is coming or not. And that's the reason the NEP is coming where they have given more emphasis on the online program. As a matter of fact, as per the NEP, what the proposal has come, that the, the courses, you can have an online course uh, for first year, one year online, you get a diploma, two year online, you get a um, uh, first year online, one year online is certificate, two year online is diploma, and three year online is a degree. So why I gave this reason, because um, even the government of India is thinking not only in India, across the world, people are thinking that you have to keep on on this online mode. The reason is considering your health is more important. We do not know. Uh, we don't want to face any more this kind of pandemic uh, scenario. Now, having said that, this program, what we say, the online is a very successful program. And across the world, a lot of... Uh, people are doing this program and we feel that it is very successful because before that we just completing a course tomorrow with the Delhi University and we find it very successful. Now what are the reason I tell you? One of the most important in the online course you have an advantage is that uh, you need not come to a place you are in one classroom you come from across the various distant places you can attend the program. You just connect and listen to the program. You can switch on your camera and you can you can really interact. And many students, they don't want to open the camera. You can switch on your camera, interact with the faculty member as like a virtual class you are doing, you can do it. Another advantage is online that if I want to uh, bring a speaker from outside country, how do I bring him? But here in this course, we have a speaker from South Africa. And fortunately, the timeline, the time zone is so advantage for us because they are three years behind and our course is starting at three o'clock in the afternoon. He can easily connect to us and he can join from Pretoria. And how do I get him from Pretoria to bring him just for one hour session? It's very difficult. Online course, that gives an advantage. And we are also not living on that. We are also going for an evaluation mechanism. Like the Delhi University course, as per the university pattern, we had an exam and that exam will be uh, interestingly say that how the exam was conducted is through the Google that exam was done. Even I'm telling you that IIT Delhi, Professor Ghosh is there. I have also taken session at IIT Delhi in the material science. When you took this exam, uh, all exams was online. I have sent the question paper to IIT Delhi to Professor Ghosh. Students have written it, students are not. And this has happened last year during pandemic. Many students has a problem is a bandwidth problem. But we managed it. We have given the timeline that from five o'clock to six o'clock, you write the exams. So questions was given and they can put in a, in a sheet of paper and it's all objective to a question A, B, C, D. You can write whatever the answer. Just take a photo and give in the WhatsApp. That was accepted. So what I'm trying to say is that why you always say necessity is the mother of invention. When this is the scenario, we can you can manage it and even this IIT course also last year, we evaluated the students and it can be done. So virtual class, to my mind, this course, what we have started it, you have got a lot of advantage. You need not travel. You need not come from your factory. You don't leave your factory work. You can work your factory only three hours. You switch off your camera. I mean, switch off your mobile phone. 
and you switch off, you are in a factory at a senior level, you can just close your door and just attend the three hour session. One after one, speakers are coming, topic on different session, and every speaker will give you 10 minutes question answer session. And we don't mind it's only three to six, even if it goes to seven, we have no problem. It's all up to the participants has to say. After every one hour session, there will be question answer session. Suppose the question answer going 15 minutes more and the course is going beyond six also, we don't mind. Our whole idea is at best what information we can pass on to you. And that's the whole idea. So to my mind, um, I'm giving an example of the national education policy or the government of India is going to implement. Why it is so, considering this global pandemic scenario, I think that's the best mechanism. And only my request to be the delegate and the participants who will be joining this course, please switch on your camera and ask question so that you can have an eye contact and one-to-one -one eye contact as if you are doing a physical class and many doubts can be clarified. Even today, uh, if you have any questions, I think our uh, Deepak ji will give the right and you can switch on your camera and you can ask the question as if we are meeting your uh, physical meeting. We can do that. So thank yeah. you, and Dr. Saha, at this point of time, before there are a couple of questions, I believe, so I would just uh, want to run a poll, uh, some question for our participant. So Ratnakar, can you just run the poll? We'll give a minute. Just click on uh, the option which you think is correct, and then we will have a couple of more questions because we are overrunning the time. So this is the, this is the poll. So based on whatever we have heard, our eminent speakers, uh, one of the best renowned international and national speakers. Uh, are you interested to participate in the certificate course on plastic packaging? So module one, plastic packaging material enhancing marketability. It is from 2nd to 26th of September. Module two, plastic and packaging environmental aspects and circular economy, which is going to start from 18th. It is not 18th okay. September, it is 18th November to 11th December. And uh, both the modules, module one and module two. And uh, yes, if you're not interested, just click on that. It is understand. Good, very good. <laughs> very ready recorder. One can just submit it. Yes, very nice. Yes. So we will just wait for uh, 10 more seconds, uh, Dr. Saha. And then uh, there are a couple of more questions. I think Mr. Pramuga has, and then we'll close it. So they can do it now online? Yes, okay. they can just click it and submit it. Oh, fantastic. Very good idea. <laughs> Deepak is doing all, all the innovative ideas. <laughs> this is the era of innovation era, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so by yes. the time they're doing, can we talk, Deepak ji? Yes, please, sir, please. Yeah. See, what I want to say, I just add on to what Professor Shah said very rightly and all that, you know, I want to say that, you know, everything has a challenge. Everything has a lot of advantages, some disadvantages and all that. So this online method also we are evolving in such a way now that it is becoming very effective. And I would like to tell to the all participants who will be willing to join. We are thinking of joining that, you know, the more challenge for us. You have the more advantage of contacting us online. You are inter even better interaction when they're in a large auditorium. Maybe you are at the last bench and you are not being able to reach and you, you hesitate to talk to the speaker. Here, you know, but what is the challenge? challenge for us, the faculty member? How do we bring it to you as best as possible? I have seen my in my physical classroom also how I narrate with my slides. I'm doing the same way. OK, yes. Physically, sometimes I used to walk through you. I could, uh, you know, interact with you physically. Obviously, there is no no substitute for that. Okay, but you have an advantage. You maybe, uh, you know, in your uh, in your shop floor, and you can just come for two hours and attend the pro uh, three hour lecture and go back to your shop floor immediately. You know, uh, if you are coming from Pune to Delhi and having the lecture, then you know it's like two days gone and all that. Okay. Okay, so you know, it's there is some advantage, disadvantages, you know, and we are getting all eminent speakers, so is faculty members connected time wise, and that will give you the all added advantage. Okay, yeah, so thank you, Dr. Ghosh. So we can close the poll. You know, okay. uh, Mr. Kanuga, if you have a couple of questions, you just ask, and then you can also deliver a vote of thanks, please. Yes, or uh, just to add to um, 
to what was being uh, said by uh, you know Dr. Saha and uh, Professor Ghosh as well is that uh, ITMA also has conducted a lot of other training programs in the recent past, uh, you know, after COVID. And uh, definitely the outcomes have been very favorable. So I'm sure this course is also on its way to success. The other question which has come in is, uh, would there be a book bill which is being, would be given to participants? Is it a hard copy or an ebook? And how are we going to get it? So I think this has already been addressed. The answer is that it would be sent by courier. Uh, it is a very well uh, drafted, uh, catalog of um, the, you know, with all the experience of our panelists. So all that would be sent to the participants. Uh, the other question that has come on the chat box is that considering that there are X number of players in the market and there's a lot of cutthroat competition, is it still advisable to look at packaging as a feasible industry? Uh, this is something, uh, you know, that a lot of people feel that, you know, there is already so much of competition and you speak to all the processors, everybody says margin nahi hai and, you know, there are still everybody's adding on capacity. So this is something that a lot of new people who would have an apprehension that, you know, should we still look at packaging? Uh, I'm sure our experienced panelists have a lot to say on this. I, I can only say yeah, that. Also yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think Banerjee, you said, please, yeah. Lenny, you say, sir, I'll just no, add. No, no, yeah. you, you say, you say, I can also add on. Yeah. You know, uh, this is very interesting, you know, always chicken and egg story. When you are finding one particular industry, they're the market leader, you know, locally or globally. That means they're taking 80% of the business, yet they're making 30%, you know, gross uh, profit or something, you know, 15%, you know, net profit and all this. Then, you know, always there is, uh, you know, opportunity to, to, you know, take some share of that business. So if you do ABC analysis, you know, you'll find that some of the product which market need and uh, this particular company, if you do a little bit, you know, kind of uh, research and all, you'll find that uh, the machine, what they're using or material they're using, there is another way of achieving the same quality, same result, maybe a better way. That means I'm talking about uh, machine, man-machine combination and all these things. So, you know, th for, for you know, uh, one example, very short, the particular, um, see, laminated tube or, say, cosmetics uh, container, it is being produced with a blow molding or extrusion uh, there. But then you'll find market, they need more, you know, touch, feel, and decoration effect. That means producing that container, no more an innovation or novelty. But how you put the decoration in it, if you buy a new generation decoration with the 3D printing and all this, you already got. So suddenly you'll find that you started getting very, you know, uh, uh, very chunk of the business, which is a high revenue earner. Instead of on an average, say, 8 rupees per piece, you are getting 16 rupees or even 20 rupees per <laughs> container. So there comes innovation. So you'll have to think. Uh, do a, you know, like, as I said, design of experiment and all these things. So you should have a team to do market research and go by. Definitely you can have a, a good proposition. I can only say uh, the question was very, very uh, interesting saying that uh, considering this huge competition in the market, whether you should go for packaging business or not. I just ask you one question. The last year when the first pandemic came, the COVID-19 we are all locked at home, but you got your all the essential, the grocery item was coming in a packed condition from Amazon everywhere. The e-commerce was so active and still there. How it reached to your place, you need packaging. And that's that the packaging was out of, a packaging was considered as an essential, like your grocery packaging essential. Without packaging, nothing can reach to your place. So whatever you say, the competition is coming, the packaging business will grow. As a matter of fact, even this today, we are talking about negative growth of GDP or economic slowdown and all. If you honestly ask me, the packaging industry has not been affected. Maybe the production has gone up because of the manpower problem, because people are not able to reach to the factory. That is a different reason. But if you ask about my demand, it is still a lot of demand has gone up. As a matter of fact, the e-commerce demand has gone up. Your Swiggy, your Amazon going where? How do you pack and send it to you? You need packaging. So consumption of packaging, even you took out of the global market, we are much less. Our per capita consumption is only 9.5 kilo, which is very less as compared to US is 71 kg. Even your Taiwan is 21 kg. So there are many products we need to be packed. So packaging industry will never die and it will, the population will grow. We always say packaging industries grow depending on the population. 
higher the population, higher demand of food, higher demand of medicine, higher demand of packaging. So this is my only can say it's all connected to the population because it's a need. It's a basic need of this material. If I can add, yeah. Shall yeah. I? Yeah. Yes, Dr. So, you know, I like to add with our two of my colleagues, you know, the key word is innovation. We should learn to innovate when, yeah. when, when we see this challenge, okay? Everything is a challenge in life, okay? Why do we innovate? We can innovate new material. For what? Better packaging with functionality. Low material requirement. Low cost. I mean, that's that's the challenge and that's the thing you will be learning from uh, from all this. Can I have a new material? Can I reduce from seven layer to three layer? Can I have a better way of running my machine? My productivity will increase. That's what I cannot just still. Uh, so it is innovation in every aspect. It's innovation in our life every day that can I live better today? Can I finish my job in which I took uh, yesterday two hours? Can I finish it in one hour? How efficient I can be? Okay. So that's what we are doing. And then when we are doing that, are we thinking of environment? Are we thinking of such? See the modules that we have taken. So it's a, it's a, that gives you the, uh, what I will say, the niche areas, the development, which will give you the uh, much more effective forward path to go ahead in this, especially in this packaging industry. I mean, opportunity is, is huge. It's a galore where uh, you can, uh, you can uh, learn and you can exploit that. I'll say that. Yes, I, I'll, I'll, I'll say it is not positive for all participants. It will be very, 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 very positive uh, 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 learning. Thank you all uh, for, for that. In fact, that also answers uh, one of the other questions that was sent to me, which is that, you know, would this uh, program be helpful for students looking for opportunities in the packaging sector? So I think all our panelists have very well told us, um, you know, what is what is in it, them, in it for us? Uh, for packaging in, in a country like India with a huge population and rising disposable incomes. Uh, one of the other questions that has come is what is the cost of the program? So the cost is 16,100 rupees plus GST per module. Uh, and, you know, uh, having seen the course content and the eminent faculty uh, uh, that, that, that we have, so I think it has been extremely uh, well priced. Uh, are there any other questions? Uh, I think uh, there is one question on the chat. So yeah. they are saying that uh, the government has now said that we have to shift from 50 to 120 micron, maybe. So uh, what can be the alternate? He says 120 m mm uh, micron thick LDP bags are adding too much of cost. So are there some alternatives? And the second question is what is the scope of packaging in plastic material and does the pigments depend on the material? So, Dr. Saha, you can take this question just briefly, two, three lines, and then uh, we can close this. No, I think uh, 120 micron, Professor Ghosh, you want to address to that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, so we will address it during the during the uh, module one and more in module two. Okay, yes. uh, because you know we have to see two aspects together. You know, I just now I said that can I have an innovation in material? Obviously, if I do innovation in material, I can go to a new material and I do not have to use those 100 micron, 120 micron. Can everything be replaced by the new material? No, it is gradually it goes into it. When you are taking more material, yes, it is becoming a little bit more expensive. But, you know, we have to go to module two. We have to see that how we can make it sustainable. Okay. So, yes, there is an optimum thickness, but we also have to go through some regulations. You know, more and more material are now bringing back through... Uh, waste management to upcycling. So if you are bringing back more material, okay, we have to make it even uh, more environmental friendly and uh, it will be like, you know, that uh, post consumer recyclate and there's a lot of new technology and new thing is coming. Okay, so I think we it is a good thing to do that uh, in terms of challenge. Also, we can we'll 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 go through this all this in the course. I, I can just I, add on. I find uh, I find on the chat is written what is the scope of packaging in plastics. Uh, very interestingly, you find the last ten years history. If you say uh, if you have a packaging material in a paper, plastic, metal, and glass, this is the only material because of numerous advantages. This is the only material the industry is growing on an average around fifteen percent on the flexible rigid packaging. Going further more is going around twenty two percent growth. 
But if you compare about the glass industry, around three to five percent, metal is going on a five percent. Of course, paper is going, but that got a lot of lot of limitation. But that's going only at the rate of ten percent. So if you ask me the scope about the all the major four material plastics, still it is superseding, and it will grow further because of lot of innovative material coming to the market. Yes, I I just two line two line uh, because these are uh, you know some of the uh, uh, the you know the narration what I made I said you know thickness and grammage these are interrelated. If you talk about you have only target of achieving thickness, you can achieve in different way. So for a you know given of 50 GSM, you can have 150 micron also. So these are things we'll be teaching when you <laughs> go through that. There are techniques to enhance the, you know, the thickness, keeping the same grammage. So you'll be light weighting, we call it. So in sustainability, and we'll talk about. And then another question that pigment, yeah. uh, is it depending on the uh, plastic material? Of course, so pigment per se are neutral. You can load pigment, you know, up to 20, 30 percent and all these things. Uh, but uh, the carrier resin, which is being used for uh, to, to disperse the pigment, that makes difference. If you have a you know LDP based uh, uh, kind of carrier resin for a given pigment, and you want to use for polypropylene, it will not work. So carrier resin has to be different. So pigment per se doesn't interfere, but the way you spread on the polymer matrix in a molten condition, that's why you'll have to understand the rheology and all this. So these are uh, interrelated, and uh, believe you me, we'll be teaching all these things uh, when we'll take the lectures in detail. Uh, MK, you can add the word dispersion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we will teach you how to disperse the pigment material into yes. the into the resin, carrying resin, and that's that's the knowledge needed. Actually, that's why they are asking this question. And I only the it. last word I would like to say that you know uh, whether this uh, uh, course will be effective to everybody. Say we are talking about executive development program, or uh, like you know the the students participant coming from the industry. That way they have seen the machine. If we talk about, you know, like a die, multifold, manifold, multi-manifold dies, or something like that, internal bubble, cooling, external, they will be able to correlate. So for them, theory and the science behind that, you know, plastic and processing, that is more important. If it is a you know very raw student, they are of course you'll have to teach them, show them, touch feel of the machine. But uh, being an executive development program, so this will be very, very effective, I guarantee it. Right. Yeah. Yes, uh, Balani. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Kanugaji, uh, if you can, Mr. Rakesh Shah, if you are there, if you want to speak for a minute. Rakesh Ji. Rakesh Ji. Just a minute. I am coming in. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Rakesh bhai, you have plastic two lines about plastic. How plastic packaging is important. Namaste to all of you. It was wonderful oh, listening yeah, to all of you. Yeah, and all my very good and very old friends, very dear friends, all three of you. <laughs> so, <laughs> we have spent so much together. So um, uh, it was really, truly a wonderful experience. Talking about plastics, well, um, I have worked all my life, uh, or let's say large part of my life in my career, about more than 30, 30. In fact, 33 years in plastics and uh, other packaging. Because the company I worked with was uh, into flexible packaging, which covered plastics as well as paper flexible and composite materials or multi-layer uh, packaging, for example, um, paper and foil in between or paper and plastic in between and so on. But uh, let me say that I've always heard that, uh, and I'm only saying what has already been said, but I want to just reinforce it that plastics is a material which is not going to go away anywhere. Packaging will continue to grow towards plastic more and more. And there are many compelling reasons. People talk about littering and uh, visible uh, issues which, uh, which uh, relate to plastics, mainly because of the human uh, neglect or negligence. But I think uh, there are other aspects people have to understand that I think a much bigger issue than plastics is global warming. And uh, if you look at uh, what happens, for example, in ocean, uh, in the oceans, when the plastic goes, you see these, you know, certain uh, 
let's say pictures coming which are all stock pictures actually a, a fish with a with a plastic um, straw in its uh, eyes or in its nose or whatever else and you see them you always hear about a dead cow and this and that does anybody realize that a two degree rise or 1.5 degree rise in the ocean's uh, temperature is wiping out species which are millions and billions of animals which are dying but nobody talks about them and right. plastics are actually consuming uh, creating the minimum minimum of all packaging materials the minimum heat load and therefore they are uh, contributing the least or rather mitigating the the uh, the global warming uh, effect of other kinds of packaging. So I think we have to take a holistic view and understand that uh, just by saying that, okay, this is littering and a cow died or, or a fish or, or a turtle was found in a net, uh, you know, which was thrown neg ne through negligence only because people shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Uh, you know, uh, and then we say, oh, plastics are the main culprit. I think that is a mindset that must change. So this is, and therefore I believe that there is no alternative. Professor already said that paper is growing at 10%, whereas other, let's say, plastic, uh, glass and metal at about five or six percent. I think metal at about six percent, glass and maybe around four to five percent. Whatever it is, he knows better because he's uh, directly so much into that. But uh, I would think that uh, uh, the properties of plastics themselves. Uh, are such that uh, people have very little choice, honestly. And there is also one more issue which nobody has so far talked about, and that is also that uh, when we talk about bioplastics, we are also looking at ethanol coming from plant sources. I think there is going to be, uh, at some point in time, there are going to be a discussion on whether bioplastics are good or bad for the, for the people, and uh, how much of uh, the arable land will go into into uh, you know uh, growing starchy materials or whatever other materials which are required for uh, making bioplastics and so on. So these are other issues, but we will come to that later. And I'm sure that um, uh, Mr. Banerjee and uh, my good friend MK and uh, Professor Ghosh, they will probably be touching upon these issues yeah. as it go on. So this is all I wanted to say. And I would certainly say that going from 51 micron to 120 micron is not a solution. And uh, it is like, uh, uh, you know, um, just enhancing the problem, doing nothing else. In fact, what should be done is, is, is a 50 micron bag is actually a good enough bag. The processing of the bag should improve. Technology should improve. Because I know the bags which are 45 and 50 microns carry 10 kilograms. And uh, in my home, I've been using bags for years, one bag going on for years, even the print goes away, but the bag continues. So uh, I think uh, by, instead of catching the bull by the horns, we are catching him the, by the tail. But nevertheless, yes. <laughs> uh, I think that is another question which connects to the advocacy and not, uh, not to our immediate subject. So um, I would like, with that, I would like to say that this whole initiative is truly outstanding. And I'm sure that the people who are aspiring to get into plastic packaging or packaging field in general will hugely benefit. And uh, I think this will be a tremendous starting point for their careers and if they are mid careers, it will certainly enhance their ability and capabilities to do better in their lives and to make greater contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rakesh. Uh, Mr. Rakesh is also the member of our APMAS MTEC advisory committee so thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. nice of you yeah so can i request rohit kanugaji to deliver the vote of thanks and yes i think uh, you know rakesh ji very very well summed up uh, the uh, the entire situation of uh, plastics in our country uh, the growth potential and you know whatever our other esteemed panelists had to say i think in a nutshell he has already brought it together very very well uh, it has been a great honor uh, for me to propose the vote of thanks uh, to all of us who have helped to make this session a resounding success. Um, uh, I would like to expressively uh, thank all our speakers, Dr. N.C. Saha, Dr. Anup Ghosh, Dr. Banerjee, and, um, and definitely Dr. Rakesh as well, and to give us an insight into what we can expect from our uh, upcoming workshop. Uh, also, uh, we would like to thank our very respected uh, Ajay Desai ji, uh, uh, 
Mr. Deepak, uh, Mr. Ravi Jasnani, and Mr. Manish Devi uh, for their moral support and guidance. Uh, last uh, last uh, but not the least, uh, definitely a very big thank you to the entire IPMA team, including um, Aniket, Shiraz, uh, you know, uh, Deepak ji, and the entire team who has worked very, very hard. And, uh, you know, I would say even, uh, you know, spoken to the industry, uh, formulated the views and brought together all the experts, uh, you know, with uh, so much of uh, dedication. Um, and also a big round of thanks uh, to all the wonderful attendees who have turned up in such good numbers. We thank you all uh, for attending this session, uh, for sharing your views, and we look forward uh, to taking this forward, not just to one, two, three, four sessions, but to make this hopefully, uh, you know, a monthly uh, pro uh, point in your calendar. Thank you all. Right. Thank you. 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 Thank It is a great privilege to work with you. Thank you so much. Ajay, Ajay, Ajay Bhai, we are so excited to see that our Rakesh Bhai is in the board. It is a great Rakesh honor for us. Bombay chahiye. Now restaurants. Yeah, we have been trying to. Thank you. Thank you.